mantra japa literally means the chanting of a mantra. It's a very, very, very powerful, beautiful sadhana to do for many reasons. Number one, most of our minds are all over the place. The mind is constantly going. This is why our scriptures always talk about the monkey mind. Not just in the time of coronavirus, not just in the time of smartphones, but the nature of the mind is to be a monkey. And so the first benefit of mantra japa is it literally takes that mind from a hundred places and it brings it to one. So where my mind was all over the place, now my mind is chanting my mantra. And by the way, the mantra is not just a semantic experience. It's not just, I am remembering and reciting words. As you chant the mantra, you are actually supposed to be able to see the mantra, hear the mantra, taste the mantra, feel the mantra. It literally is. Fill yourself with the mantra. So that's the first easy, wonderful benefit is suddenly my mind is on one thing. Number two, the mantra itself is very, very powerful. The Sanskrit mantras from the scriptures are scientific, alchemical methods of transformation. And so even sitting and listening to mantras be chanted, whether you understand them or not, if we're sitting in puja, for example, and priests are chanting mantras. The sound of the mantras is very, very, very powerful. So if you're chanting it, the mantra itself, the sound of that mantra, the alchemical magic of that mantra is very powerful. So that's the deeper benefit of it. But then we go even another deeper stage, which is that if that mantra has been given to you by a guru, in the mantra is the power, the shakti, the sadhana of the guru. So it has actually been not only personally selected for you by the guru, but as it's given to you, it's given to you with that shakti of the guru. And so that's another very, very, very deep component. I know for me, my mantra feels sometimes like a life raft for me. If my mind is going, if there's that ocean of things, uh, stormy ocean of things in the mind, just things that need doing or things that need to be being thought about and the mind going all over the place, whatever it may be. The minute I grab hold of the mantra, it pulls me right out of that stormy ocean. It's a very, very, very powerful technique. And so we develop a practice of it usually with our meditation, usually when we sit to meditate. Prior to meditation is usually a very good time to do the japa. It leads very nicely into meditation. And then slowly, slowly what starts happening in life is your mantra is always on. Always on. You may be working, you may be cooking, you may be driving, you may even be talking to someone. 
but that mantra is always on. And so suddenly the monkeyness of the mind stops because the background of the mind, rather than being a monkey all over the place, becomes a beautiful mantra. And the more and the more mantra jap you do, the more the mantra starts to chant itself. So keep doing, keep doing. Do it while you're seated with your mala in your meditation, but then do it during your life. Whatever you're doing, you can be chanting your mantra. Let that that beautiful miracle transform you.